What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics. And up next, we are going to be talking about some really cool books that sold this week. We've got the Heritage Auction Weekly Recap, and we're going to be going over books all the way from modern back to golden age. Some cool books, some big sales, some low sales. Let's check these out. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I have been doing the top 10 books that have sold in the weekly heritage auction the last couple of weeks, but I'd like to change it up just a little bit so that you're not seeing X-Men 1, Amazing Spider-Man 1, Amazing F Fantasy 15 every single week, because if you just do the top sales, the books that sold for the most, that's generally what you're going to get week after week is those big keys. There's usually one or two that sell every week. So you'll see those each time. So this time what I did was I went through all the listings that I was watching that I had priced out and I picked out what I thought were some of the coolest books that sold in this auction. So this definitely includes some big key books as well, but we're not just limiting ourselves to that scope. So let's get into these books. All right, so the first book that we are going to talk about, this is a book that I had always wanted when I was a kid. I've only had one copy since I've gotten back into collecting comics, you know, about five years ago or so. This is Wolverine number eight. This classic cover with Wolverine and Hulk done by John Buscema at the solid blue background. I think that's one of the things that really sells this for me. I like the fact that there really isn't any background there and the focus is just on those two characters. The other thing that's pretty cool about this one is the back cover. You've got this Rob Liefeld Wolverine depiction. It's not an ad or anything like that. You've got this really cool uh, image on the back as well. Now, if you are keeping an eye out for the direct edition versus the newsstand, the back cover is actually where you will find the uh, little box there where the newsstand will have that barcode here instead of Spider-Man's face. So just something to keep an eye out for that if you're seeing this book either on the wall or in bins, that kind of thing, you've got to take it out of the bag to check if it is actually that new stand or not. But this book, I had this one going for $270 and it sold for exactly $270. That does not happen very often where I hit it directly on the mark, but this one went exactly for what I thought it would sell for. This did have a high sale of $750 during the comic boom. If we take a look, at the prices for this book, you can see that it is still pretty elevated from where it was prior to the that jump in prices in 2021 and 2022. So here's that peak sale, that $750 sale that happened in 2021. And you can see we've been on this general downtrend ever since. So earlier this year, and you see this book sells a lot, Earlier this year, this book was up around $375 to $400, and it has just been consistently trending down to where we are now around $270, $275 for this book. Last sale, $262, right before that, $290. And here's that $270 sale that we saw this week on Heritage. So with what I see with this, I mean, I would be cautious on it. It does seem like it is still on this general downward trend. Prior to the comic boom, this book, I mean, in 2020, as low as $100, but it looks like really it was going for around $175 to $200. So I could definitely see this book continuing to drop. I would be cautious with it. I do think it's an awesome cover, but looking at the trend for the book, I think this one's still coming down. I think you'll be able to get it for cheaper in the future. All right, now let's jump to a, a golden age book. We'll we'll switch things around a little bit throughout the uh, throughout the video. So we're going to go to all top number sixteen. If you recognize this one, this was one of the books that I traded away, one of the biggest books that I traded away in my big trade that I did earlier this year, where I did five comics for fifty. And so this is a classic Matt Baker cover. This is one of the big, you call it key, good girl art cover issues by Matt Baker. Matt Baker is one of the most well-known, famous golden age artists, really known for the good girl art type genre for the most part. And on this cover here, we've got Rule of the Jungle Goddess battling this octopus. This is a 1.5 that went for $810. I had this one going for $800, so almost exactly 
on this one as well. Just 1% over my estimate. It has not sold publicly in this grade before, so there's no prior high, anything like that. So this is the record for this book just because it hasn't sold before. But to get an idea what this book goes for, especially in higher grade, if we took a, take a look at all top number 16. And you can see here the Promise Collection copy sold earlier this year in 80 for $19,200. And that was a big jump from where it had sold initially in 2021. It jumped $6,000 in just two years uh, for that copy. I had a 6.5 that I ended up selling as part of that trade. You can see there's actually an Okajima pedigree copy too. I wonder if there's a, no, there's no image of that one. But this is a very expensive book. You can see in the lower grades, it's going around $1,000, maybe $800 per point. Uh, in the 3.0, around $500 per point. Then you see the 4.5, about $800 a point. Then as you get up into higher and higher grades, it gets more and more rare, more in demand. And we have this Promise Collection copy going for over $2,000 a point. So uh, if you want to take a look at, at that one, to get an idea what a, a high grade copy of this book looks like. Here's that uh, all top number 16 and an 8.0, you know, just for compare comparison with this one. This is still for a 1.5. It's a decent enough looking copy. I mean, yeah, it's got dirt and that kind of stuff on the cover, but no big pieces missing. You've got the full image. So that's a big selling point for this one. So for $810, looks like that's about the buy-in point. Like that's what it's going to take to get into this book. All right. So next, let's go to a Let's jump to a DC book. Uh, this is one that I don't see in this type of grade very often. This is Superboy number 68. This is the first appearance of Bizarro, a 6.5. It's actually a pretty high grade for this book. Whenever I see this book come up for sale, I see this book in like 3.0, 2.0, 3.5, something in that range. And this is a solid, solid copy. This is relatively early Silver Age. You see here, this is 1958 origin and first appearance of Bizarro. He's right on the cover there and went for $1,500. I had this book going for $1,650. So this was 9% below my estimate. The record during the comic boom was $2,986. So let's take a look at that one. This is one of the few key issues that's part of the Superboy run. There are a couple key issues in that run. I'd say this is pro other than issue number one, probably. This is likely the biggest one. Uh, I think there's like the first Lana Lang is maybe issue 10 or 11, something like that as well. That's also a pretty pricey book. Um, but take a look at the 6.5 here. We can see that peak sale that happened in 2021, $2,986. But generally, it's been going more around the $1,500 price point. But if we go back, this is a book that it's just been flat to down for the last six or seven years. Uh, this is one that it's doing that traditional DC thing. <laughs> you know, you're not seeing any consistent increase in prices. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you extend it out back to 2002, you can see this general uptrend. But for the last eight years, this book has been flat or down. Uh, so just something to think about. I do like to point that out as well. Not every book goes up all the time. Uh, some books stay flat for very long periods of time, and then they might have a jump in price, and that's the new baseline, or they might just continue to drop. I mean, that's also a thing that can happen. Not everything goes up. But for this one, like I said, I had this book going for 1650 sold for 9% below my estimate. Now let's jump over to some Marvel Silver Age next. This is Tales to Astonish, number 27. Pretty low grade. It is complete. I mean, let's take a look at this thing. I mean, you can see this book is wrecked. <laughs> it's it's complete. Uh, I think it's even attached. I can't tell. I would. I don't know. I don't know if this one's attached. Uh, but it's graded as a 1.0. I wouldn't be surprised if CGC hit this with like a 0.5, just with how rough it is. But I, I don't think complete books like this should be 0.5s, but I know sometimes you see it with CGC. Uh, but they have it as a 1.0, went for $960. Again, another one that went for almost exactly what I thought it was. I thought it would go for $950 as a raw copy and went right around where I expected. 
This is the first appearance of Hank Pym. This is not the first appearance of Ant-Man in costume, but first appearance of Hank Pym who becomes Ant-Man. And just showing, it's still a pretty solid book. So let's take a look at this one. We've got Tales to Astonish, number 27. And if we go down to a 1-0, you can see the last sale was in June, and that was $1,442. We had a 1.5, though, that went in July for 1400 or 1398 uh, We had a 2.5 that went for in September for 1570 And so this is definitely a book that has been trending down. And so that's why I priced it a little bit lower. Uh, I had it really, if I felt if it was a 1.0 graded, it would probably go around 1050 to 1100 So ungraded, I have it as $950. I generally back out the what I would consider the grading and, and pressing costs. And that's how I price that raw book. And so for this one, going for $960, right around what I thought. So again, about $1,000 just to get into this book. Now let's take a look at maybe a more common grade. So we've got a 3.5, recently sold for 2,600. Still a little elevated. And so again, another book that I wouldn't be surprised if it continues to drop a little bit more. Um, you know, if we look at the prices in 2020, you know, it's, it's still above that. Now that doesn't mean we're going to go back necessarily exactly to those 2020 prices. It's possible that like I've talked about in other videos that we've got that trend up and it will meet that trend line and then start moving up again. But one that does have the potential, I think, to continue to drop a little bit, especially after the Ant-Man movie this year and, and all of that. Now, the other related book that I wanted to show was that two sales later, we had the first appearance of Ant-Man in costume. And this was a really nice grade. A 7.5 is not a grade you see very often. This book has corrected a lot since the comic boom. It spiked a ton and has pulled back as well. So if we take a look at issue number 35, I mean, a 7.5 is an incredible grade, really one you don't see come up. I mean, look at these higher grades. I mean, you just, you haven't seen a sale for a year or more in many of these grades. And if we go down to a 7.5, we see that $2,160 sale, peak sale during the comic boom, $5,520. Now this one I had going for 2,500. So at 2,160, it was still 14% below my estimate. This is one that, I mean, look at where this book is. It's right back where this book was prior to the comic boom. So I mean, this feels like a pretty safe buy. I, I think that this was a very low risk buy. I mean, look at this 2016 going for 2,174, 2015, 2,931, uh, 2017, 1900. I think at $2,100 for a 7.5, which is a tough grade for this book, I think this was a good pickup. I mean, let's take a look at the, uh, at the census for this book. So we've got, I mean, the main thing they notice is the cover tanning on this one. Otherwise, it's a, a stunning copy. So if we take a look at the census here, there are 33 and a 7.5, only 54 higher. I mean, out of 990 copies that put you inside the top 10%, that is a very nice copy of this book. And I think it was got at a pretty reasonable price. So Dale's Astonish number 35, great cover. I like this cover more than 27. I get that 27 is more expensive because it's that first appearance. This is the second appearance and the first in costume, but I like this cover more. I think it's a cool book. All right. Now let's, let's check out a golden age book again. This was one of the, the coolest books in this one. I made a run at this book. This was four color number 16. You can see my bid there. I think I was the under bid. Uh, I don't know if there was one or more in between or not. I was pretty close. Uh, this is four color number 16. Let's see in the notes up here. First Mickey Mouse comic book. Now you do have the, the magazines and those, those dairy prints that I talked about in, a, in another video as well. But this is one of the books that people really, really want. If you're a Disney collector, if you're a Mickey Mouse collector, this is one of the big keys. I like the cover. It's a cool cover and a 5.0 is a nice grade. Now, I had this one going for $8,000, went for 8,400, 5% over my estimate. So right around where I thought it would uh, would go. I definitely helped that one out. <laughs> I feel like I was in, I was bidding back and forth a few times on this one. I went a little more than I'd wanted to bid, but I just don't see this book 
hardly ever and usually it's wrecked if you see it or it's restored i see it restored a little more often but a 5.0 is a nice nice grade for this one its prior record in grade was 2868 this is one of those books that i've talked about this before i wish i would have uh, gone after this one a few years ago because it used to be quite a bit cheaper not cheap anymore <laughs> so uh, if we take a look at the pricing for this i mean look at this you just you rarely have any sales there has been one sale two sales in the last year we had an 85 for 57600 and then we had this 50 for 8400 all the other sales it looks like were over a year ago and that's just how rarely you see this come up for sale especially unrestored and so if we take a look at that 50 you can see that high sale was actually the prior high sale was in 2007 in 2013 1852 2010 2766 but based on the other sales that we've seen for this book we knew it was going to go for probably around eight thousand dollars i wouldn't have been surprised if it went for more though i mean especially with that fifty seven thousand dollar sale for an eight five earlier this year so if we take a look at the census there are 102 copies on census but that 50 i mean look at that there's seven out of 50 and above that there's nine ten 19, 21, 22. So only 22 copies graded higher. Uh, and this is where you usually see this book. I mean, look at this. There's 13 at a 2.0, 12 at a 3.5. Lower grades like that is generally where you're going to see this book if you see it at all. And so this was an exceptional copy. And yeah, I went after it, but uh, I didn't I didn't end up with it. But it's okay. It's okay. All right. Let's check out another Golden Age book, uh, one that... I think I talked about last week as well, but we had another copy come for sale. We had the CBCS one that I had talked about either last week or the week before. Chamber of Chills number 19, one of the most iconic Golden Age pre-code horror covers done by Lee Elias. This was a 1.8 that went for $7,800. I had it going for $7,000, so this went 11% above my estimate. Pretty solid sale for that book. Prior record was 3120 so if we go to Chamber of Chills, number 19, I mean, this is one of those books that it's just, it's always been popular, but it has just become one of the hallmarks of the golden age, especially for pre-code horror and the base price just to get in. I mean, you can look at this, like a 3.0 went for 9,000 earlier this year, this 1.8 for 7,800. It's just, it's going to cost you probably even for a one I wouldn't be surprised if it was six or $7,000. I mean, this is just a book that's going to cost you probably six grand just to get in. And then you definitely have some price compression down around the lower, the lower grades just to get a copy. Uh, and then you get that big acceleration as the grades go up where you had this high sale with a nine, six, two years ago that went for 102,000. I wouldn't be shocked if that went for more today. Uh, just with what we've seen with prices with this book since then. But yeah, I mean, let's take a look at that 9.6. I think this was from that Black Cat collection. Yeah, yeah, the Black Cat collection, that's a little sticker up there. I mean, 9.6, creamed off white pages, incredible looking cover for this book. I mean, yeah, it still looks great in a 1.8. I mean, just like flip between these two. It's like, yeah, this is way cleaner. You know, you don't have the creases or anything like that. This one, it's still complete. Colors still look great. No big pieces missing or anything. I mean, it's one of those books that it looks good in most grades. It, unless it's missing a big piece from the front, this is a solid, solid looking book. And so, yeah, I mean, I think people know I, if you've watched my channel, I picked up a, a pretty high grade copy relatively recently. I have a, a 7.5 that I'm very happy with. Um, and it's just because it's one of those books that it just speaks to you when you see it, you know, it, it's just one of those books that has a really amazing cover. Now, the thing that's interesting about this book is if you look at the prices I mean, look at this 2004, this 9.6 was $776. This is one of those books that has just, it's been, it's like a modern variant with how the prices have, have gone up with it. And that's one of the things that's honestly, for me, is a little bit scary with it. And yeah, I mean, it just, it didn't have that, maybe that place in culture where people just recognize it and having all the homages that are done now and everything, because I mean, that's true with, with all the grades. I mean, when a nine, six was going for seven seventy two, and look at this, 
an 80, the file copy, 2004, $127. Now, $37,000. <laughs> it's just, it is one of those books that when you see that, like this was not an expensive book if you go back 20 years. This was extremely affordable. You could get it for, look at this, I mean, like high grade, 200 bucks. Even back to 2010, 700 bucks. It's up 50X since 2010. I mean, those those are modern variant prices. <laughs> so it's something that, that I always think about when I think about this book, that it was very, very affordable going back 10 years, especially 20 years. And it has become a extremely expensive book since then. So yeah, I just, I like looking at those numbers, looking at that history, seeing how prices have changed for some books, which books have become very popular, very in demand that, that just weren't so much, you know, a, a number of years ago, but yeah, cool book, big number. And it just keeps demanding big numbers. Now, two sales later, this was one I thought was interesting to talk about. We have Chamber of Chills number 23. This is another Lee Elias cover. This is probably the number two cover from this run. And I thought this one went for a steal. And I think it's because it had this green label. So this went for $1,140. I had it going for $1,700. Went 33% below my estimate. So if we take a look at Chamber of Chills number 23, and we go down uh, we've got to go down to 1954. That's one of those things to always be aware of that some of these books have multiple uh, issues with the same number. So there's a 1951 Chamber of Chills number 23, and then there's a 1954. The 1954 is this book. So if we go down and look at a 0.5, we had 0.5 in 2020 going for $900. This is a book that is much more expensive today than it was in 2020. Let's look at, say, a 4.5. For example, 2021, this was 3,269. In 2018, it was 1,255. It is now $5,430. So to me, this book, probably since 2020, it's about doubled in that time period. It's not a book that really sells all that often. And so it's tough to, to find a lot of pricing on it. But if we look at other grades, like the, uh, what are we here? The 5.5. In 2020, this was $2,640. Uh, now 4,800 in 2022, maybe a little more today. So I felt like approximately double for that 0. 0.5. So I said 1,700 was a reasonable estimate. And this is one that actually got that qualified grade, meaning it looks like a 3.5. It doesn't look like a 0. 0.5. It doesn't have a bunch of big creases, a bunch of big missing pieces. Colors are great. I mean, the only thing is it's missing, let's see here, it's missing that centerfold. And so this is an example where I think this book, if it had been a 0.5 blue label, it probably would have sold for more than it did here as a 3.5 green label. And so for anybody that's maybe new to the channel or not as familiar with graded books, what CGC does sometimes is they give a book a what's called a qualified grade. And so they put the note on here for what's wrong with the book, in this case, centerfold missing, and they grade it like that centerfold was there. And so the reason for this is to basically show that a book presents better than the grade that it received. And so you'll see this sometimes with books that have a pop staple, but are extremely high grade. And so maybe it's a, it looks like a nine, six or a nine, eight, and you have a pop staple. So they give it a green label 9.8 instead of giving it a seven O or a 6.5 blue label. You also see this with Hulk 181 where you have the Marvel value stamp cut out. And so the max grade you could typically get with that missing Marvel value stamp is about a two to a 2.5. And, but we had recently a 9.8 qualified that sold for Hulk 181. And so that sold for, I think around $10,000, like 9,600, whereas a 2.5 blue label would just sell for typically around two grand, somewhere in that range, 1,800 maybe to two grand. So in general, this is supposed to show that it's a nicer presenting copy, but sometimes that green label really hurts things. Like people just don't like the look of the green label. And so in this case, I think it hurt the value. 
I think that's really what hurt this one. Like I said, I had it going for 1700 went for 1140 I think this was a great pickup. I think whoever got this got this for a, a very good deal. Now, me personally, I like 19 more. I'm not really as big of a fan of the super gross out type covers. And this is definitely more in that realm of super gross out type cover where the, you know, this zombie kind of falling apart in this woman's hands. Uh, whereas that's why I like 19 a little more where, I don't know, it's like classy horror, <laughs> you know, <laughs> however you want to, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but all right, let's jump to another big Silver Age key, but that's this X-Men number one. Now, the reason is this is a 0.5. This went for $1,740. I get it. This book is rough. It's got, I don't know if this is like masking tape on the cover. That's what I think it is. It's probably like masking tape along the spine. I mean, that's, that's my guess. That's my guess as, as to what that is. And yeah. It detracts from the book. It doesn't look as nice. But this went for $1,740. That is a great price, a great entry point for this book. I mean, it has actually really nice colors otherwise. You know, it's not missing any pieces or anything. But yeah, this really deters from, from the book. I totally get that. But if we take a look at X-Men number one, and so we've got... I mean, one of the biggest Silver Age Marvel keys. Now, this is still probably a bit elevated in price from where it was prior to the comic boom. So, I mean, take that for what it's worth. But, I mean, let's look at a 0.5. I mean, a <laughs> look at this. Like, 0.5s hit a high of $5,400. This is all the way back, really, to pre-boom prices. I mean, if we go back to 2018, 2019, I mean, let's let's go 2019. This book was selling from between around fourteen hundred and two thousand. I mean, let's say like seventeen to eighteen hundred dollar book. This one here went for seventeen hundred and forty dollars. This is all the way back to pre-boom prices. And the big benefit of this copy is that this one is not incomplete. Yeah, I mean, it it doesn't look great or anything like that from on this part over here. But this is a complete copy. It's not missing any pages. Doesn't have any cutouts, anything. And so. You got a complete copy for $1,740. I mean, I think this might have been one of the buys of the auction. I had this one going for $2,700. This went 36% below my estimate. I think this is one of the buys of the auction. If I hadn't been watching this day, so I wasn't watching the Silver Age stuff. If I had been watching this, I would have been on this book. To get an X-Men number one for $1,740 for the like 2019 type prices, I'd have bought that all day. I think this was an incredible pickup. And yeah, I mean, first appearance of the X-Men, first Magneto, all that kind of stuff. I, I mean, I might even take that one and, and crack it out of the slab just so that's one where, you know, you can flip through that one. You're not really worried about damaging it any worse. It's already the 0.5. Maybe you resubmit it and you get a one, <laughs> you know, something like that, because it is complete. I can almost guarantee you, you'd get higher than a 0.5 from CBCS one, maybe 1 1.5, maybe even like a one eight. So that could be what somebody's going to do. Maybe they'll try resubmitting to CBCS. I don't know, but I think that was one of the, one of the buys of the auction. I think that was a great, great pickup. Now jump into a more modern book. I feel like I haven't talked about this one for a little bit, but this is a super hot book. This is new mutants number 98. Now this is a 9.6. And I just wanted to pick this one out because it kind of shows how affordable this book has become again, but $408 for a 9.6. This book in the middle of the comic boom was going for a peak price of $1,300. This has been cut by two thirds from there. And I mean, Deadpool has become super hot right now, but definitely has continued to pull back, even though we've got that Deadpool mutant, uh, Deadpool movie coming out next year. So this first appearance of Deadpool, and we take a look at a, a 9.6, and we had, and you can see this general dent downtrend still going. Here's that $1,300 sale back from 2021, still in 2022, going for $1,050, 2023 had a high sale of $840. So here's that sale at $408, and honestly, even compared to pre-comic boom prices, this seems like a pretty reasonable pickup. I mean, let's take a look at... 2020 and yeah in 2020 there's a low sale of 248 but if you scroll through these prices i mean look at this 
450, 430, 450, 500, 550, 400. I mean, this really is even on the lower end on average of what this book was going for for a lot of that year. I mean, we get really earlier in the year, we're getting down into kind of like the 350 to $400 price point. But this is one that at $400 for a 9.6 feels pretty low risk. It It is elevated a bit from if, you, if you're going to go back even before 2020 prices. So if we go back to maybe like 2019, uh, you can see it's a little more in like the 300, maybe $350 high 200 price. But this doesn't seem like a high risk buy to me. I mean, this was a book that it did what you'll often see with these types of books where it had that spike. This is almost certainly that Deadpool movie. So you have the spike here and then it's flat for a long time as it catches back up. You know, you have that trend from prior to the spike. It's catching back up to the spike. Then it just happened to have the comic boom at the same time. So it spiked again. And so then what are we going to probably see it catch up again? And it's probably right around there. I mean, $400 for a 9.6 for one of the most popular characters today doesn't seem that bad to me. Again, this is one that I feel like was a very low risk buy, pretty decent pickup. Not like that X-Men 1. X-Men 1, that was, I think that was the buy. But a uh, pretty decent pickup, 14% below my estimate. All right, now let's jump to the uh, the Golden Age again. There's a bunch of really cool Golden Age books that sold in this auction. So it's tough to pick exactly which one I want to talk about. But figure this one's pretty rare. This is one that you're not going to see come up for sale very often. This is Mystic Comics number eight. This is a, a character called the Destroyer. This was the first character created by Stan Lee. I've talked about this before with some other characters in the Golden Age. You would think this guy's a villain. I mean, he looks like a villain. He's got a skull on his on his chest, but he is one of the heroes. You know, he is he is the hero here. And he's fighting some goblin monsters that are are Nazis. You know, this is during the World War II era, 1942. You've got this Iron Maiden that this woman is in that she's about to get, you know, these spikes smushed into her. And this is a crazy cover. I was considering bidding on this one, but it already got higher than I was really comfortable bidding on. So I had this going for $6,500, went for 6,000. So 8% below my estimate. It's one of those things where it's like one more bid would have basically put it at my estimate. So is pretty close to where I thought it would go. It is a new record though for the book. Its prior record was $4,320. If we take a look at this one, go mystic number eight, 1942. And so this was a 4.0. Here's that sale. Definitely below that 3.5 sale, but this is a tough one where, you know, we had a 4.5 last year going for 5,400. We had this 3.5 going for 6,692 and its prior sale was 4,633. So what I was wondering, and this is one of those things I've talked about before with confirmation sales, I wasn't sure if this book would go for less or if it would go for more confirming this sale. And so to me, this showed that maybe that 3.5 sale was a little high. Now I get it. This one has this little note here. It's a piece out of page 29, slightly affects story. Maybe that deterred people a little bit. Maybe the light tan pages deterred people a little bit. Maybe this on the spine, you know, kind of that like break along the spine deterred people. I, I don't know. It, it's hard to say for sure. It's a 4.0. It's a solid looking 4.0, a decent presenting copy, no big pieces or creases down the middle of the cover, anything like that. But to me, this tells me that maybe this 3.5 went a little strong. Maybe this is a little more in line with where this book is right now, but still overall a, a solid sale. I mean, this is timely World War II, Stanley creation book. I mean, these are books that are, are very expensive regardless, uh, but I think it's a pretty cool cover. It's one of those books that has a lot of crazy content on it. The thing that to me is definitely a, a negative is that the Destroyer isn't a real well-known character. Now, I did talk about this in a prior video. I made a comment on how the Destroyer is an obscure character. And there was a comment in, maybe it was in a video or maybe I posted about it on Instagram. And somebody had responded that, oh, you know, Destroyer isn't an obscure character. <laughs> I was like, okay. I went and asked multiple people. I showed them pictures of that character, people that I know collected comics and they had no idea who this character was. This is a character that golden age collectors know. 
If you are not a Golden Age collector, the likelihood of you recognizing this character is extremely low. And so that's, I've talked about that some other times before. There's kind of like, there's echo chambers out there, you know, and you get that with books like Ultimate Fallout 4, the Georgevic variant, where people who all love that book, maybe they talk to each other and they think it's worth more than what it really is. And like with Golden Age, people who love Golden Age, they talk to each other and they think Golden Age is more widespread and known than it really is. And you really have to understand where that character, where that book is in the perspective of the, the larger comic collecting community. This is an obscure character. <laughs> so I'll just say it. But it is a cool cover. It has great cover content that tied to Stan Lee and everything. So I don't want to take anything away from it. But we also, I feel like as Golden Age collectors, we can't lie to ourselves and say that this is a character that everybody knows. It's the same as a lot of those characters like the Black Terror. Like outside of Golden Age collectors, basically no one knows who the Black Terror is. <laughs> so don't take away from some of the cool covers that he's on, you know, and a lot of the Alex Schomburg covers and, and that kind of thing. But is what it is. <laughs> so, but yeah, I just, I, I want to get on my soapbox a little bit about that because I just, I think sometimes we, we overestimate how many people really know or recognize these types of books. Like, and I'm a golden age collector. Like I, I love like my punch comics 12, but I also recognize that most people aren't going to know what that book is. So just, uh, something that, that I think everybody should think about a little bit, you know, when you're, when you're talking about some of these more obscure and very expensive comics. Now, another one that came up for sale, I thought was really a great opportunity. And you can see I bid on it because uh, I, I have a copy, but I, I mean, I wasn't going to, you know, turn this one down if I felt like I was going to be able to, to get it for the right price. This is Walt Disney's comics and stories. Number one, this is to me, one of the great covers from the golden age. You've got Donald Duck right on the cover. I like the solid backgrounds. That is always a big selling point for me with a lot of these older books. There's just something about them where you make that character the, the focal point in the center. I really like the, the page turn that's used in Batman. Every once in a while, you get this page turn. I think this is just a great cover, 1-0, great entry level book. And it looks really nice. I mean, it looks like probably the spine is either all split or mostly split, but still a solid presenting copy. 1-0 went for $1,800. I had this one going for $2,200, so went 18% below my estimate. I think somebody got this for a good price. I, I think this was a, a good pickup. It really shows what that, that base entry point is for this book. I mean, it's not a cheap book, but you don't see this book hardly ever come up for sale. I mean, you really don't. I, I've seen probably four or five in the last year, and you never know which book's going to come up for sale. I mean, it could be a high grade copy that goes for ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars, or it could be a lower grade copy. And this was, you know, somebody's opportunity to get into that book. And so I think that was, you know, that was a, a good pickup. And you know, look at this. Like, yeah, they sell every once in a while, but when you start getting into higher grades, I mean, like a six O has sold a few times. So there's been this six. I don't know if it's the same copy or what it, that keeps coming up for sale, but it's sold a few times. But then you get up above that. I mean, the six five hasn't sold for three years, seven O four years, eight O six years, eight five, 12 years, nine four hasn't sold for 15 years. It sold for 116,000 15 years ago. I don't know if it would sell for more today or not. Walt Disney's comics and stories are, are interesting. Um, you had some really, really high sales for, for a lot of them back in like the, the early two thousands. And a lot of them have dropped in price since those sales, there still can be very valuable books, but they had some big sales in the early two thousands. So I don't know for sure this one would actually sell for more or not today, but that is a stunning looking copy. I've never actually looked at this one. I mean, that is a, that is a good looking copy of this book. And I, I'm not surprised if this is the top of census. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, there's one in nine four zero higher. Next one is a nine zero. There's one eight five, one eight zero, one seven five. This is why you never see these books come up for sale. There's just one, one of each of these greats, you know. And so it's only coming up for sale if that person that owns it, the single person that owns it, decides that they want to sell it. But yeah, I I really like that book. It's it's one that I've been considering selling mine, but I always struggle with it because it's it is one of my favorite golden age covers. All right. Now I could keep talking about these. There, there's tons of great books that sold in this auction, but I'm going to close out with one more 
and it's actually two books because there were two copies that sold. And this was Hulk number one. First one was a 3.5. This also felt like a pretty solid pickup because this is a nice looking 3.5. This 3.5 that went for $15,600. I had this going for $19,500. This was 20% below my estimate. I mean, look at this thing. Like the colors are really deep on this. There's a little bit of Marvel chipping, but this is a very, very nice looking copy. Now there was also a 1.5 that sold just after that. This 1.5 I had going for $9,200, went for $8,100, 12% below my estimate. I mean, for a 1.5, this is also a very good looking book. I mean, yeah, there's some staining. It looks like might be detached. I don't know. It's Maybe it's still attached. I'm not sure. There's some staining. There's some little pieces missing, some roughness. But overall, for a 1.5, this is a very good looking copy of this book. Oh, yeah, here you can go. So on the back cover, there's quite a bit of staining on that back there. The dark cover hides the staining some, but this is a nice presenting 1.5. But let's take a look at the prices. Let's see long term how this is doing because I, I haven't checked that yet. I mean, the 3.5 had a peak sale of $24,000. The 1.5 had a peak sale of $14,495. So they have both retreated quite a bit since then. But the early Hulk issues, issues one through six, really spiked during the comic boom. So I'm not surprised about retreating prices, but let's see where it is, where that price really is today. So if we look at Hulk one, this is the 3.5. It has this very long general uptrend. That sale that it just had, pretty much in line. So I would say that sale at 15600 for a 3.5, yes, it's a big drop from the other prices this year, but that feels pretty much in line with where I would expect this book to go. I mean, may, if you look at the long-term trends, I mean, maybe it could drop a little bit more, but again, feels like a relatively low-risk pickup. I mean, if we go back to uh, 2020, 2019, that book was probably somewhere around, you can tell, around a $10,000 book. So yeah, maybe it's a little elevated still since then, post-comic boom, but the risk doesn't feel all that high to me. Now, if we look at the 1.5, 1 1.5, 5, it's pretty much I mean, back in line, maybe even a little lower. I mean, if we look at the the 2020 prices, 9,700, 2019, 6,000, 2018, let's take a look what the range was. I mean, probably closer to 6,500 to 7,000 in 2018. I mean, this one going for 8,100, that, that one feels even lower risk. That it feels like a very good pickup in my opinion, especially with how nice that copy looks. I mean, for 1.5, that is a great looking book. I think the pricing seems really in line with where that book had been before. I mean, sure, prices can drop lower. They could always go below those trend lines. I, I get that. But I like looking at what the, the risk is, what the downside risk is. Prices tend to pop back up. I mean, you can look at you can look at like these prices here. I mean, you have little ups and downs. You had somebody paid a little more here, then it dropped down. Then you move a few years into the future and it's back up above those prices. Same thing probably if we look at the, you know, the 3.5. You have highs and lows. You know, someone paid a little higher here, then lower, higher, lower, higher. And it just generally trends up a little bit. And so, yes, you may have some downside risk there. Like this person, someone paid 10,000 or 12,500 here and it dropped down and had a $9,000 sale, but then went back up some had a $14,000 sale. And so that's really what I look at with these books. You have, you're going to have ranges, you're going to have highs and lows. And so, yes, it could drop maybe a little bit more, but it feels like the risk at the, at these price points, the three, five and the one five really not bad. And they're both solid looking copies for their grades. I mean, for 1.5, great looking copy. And then this one for a 3.5, really great looking copy. I mean, that that is a copy that would look really good up on, you know, up on a shelf, up on your wall. See, maybe it's got some tanning or something like that going on in the back cover. But that's one of the big pluses for Hulk number one. You've got this really dark cover. So things like tanning and stains really don't show all that much. So thought that was a good one.
All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. Appreciate it. If you stuck with me throughout this entire thing, I just thought I would change it up a little bit this time. Just pick out some books that I thought were cool. I had about twice as many, but this video already got a little bit too long. So just decided to, uh, to cut it there. If you'd like to see more videos like this, just hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, all that kind of stuff. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, description button is right here and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.